Hello friends, welcome to Quick Learn Tutorial Series. In this video, I will explain you thyristor commutation techniques. This is lecture number 42 of Power Electronics Series. So let's start with the topic. Uh, before I discuss the thyristor commutation techniques, we must know about what do you mean by commutation. So uh, basically commutation is the process of turning off the device. Or we can say that the technique of turning of the device is called commutation. In terms of thyristor, we can say that commutation is a process by which we turn off the thyristor. Or the other definition of thyristor commutation is the process by which the SCR is turned off from its turn on state is called SCR commutation or thyristor commutation. So these are some simple definition of commutation. So simply we can say that turning off process is called commutation. Hello friends, welcome to Quick Learn website and I am very excited to inform you that in Quick Learn I have recently launched my website that is www.quick-learn.in. This website is especially for all the engineering and diploma students and those students who will preparing for competitive exams. So, in the blog section of the website, you can find the notes of all the electrical and electronic subjects just like basic electronics, microcontroller, microprocessor, power electronics and slowly slowly I will add more notes in the website. And if you are preparing for any government competitive exams, then check also my MCQ series that is multiple choice question series and previous year question papers that will help you in your competitive exams. Here I also upload the quiz test or mock test for ONGC, UPPCL or for different type of competitive exam previous year question papers. Or for latest update, please join my telegram channel. The link of my telegram channel I will give in my description box. So stay continue and keep watching and keep visiting my website. Now here we discuss about thyristor commutation. So we must know about the basic of thyristor. What is thyristor? How thyristor get turned on? What is the working of thyristor? So in my previous video, I have already discussed or already made number of videos in thyristor. So if you want the basic of thyristor, please refer my that videos. Here I give a brief introduction of thyristor. Thyristor is basically a power semiconductor switching device. It is a unidirectional device. It having three terminal, anode, cathode and gate, three junction, J1, J2 and J3 and four layer P and Pn. When anode is positive with respect to cathode and we apply a sufficient amount of gate current, thyristor will start conducting and a forward current flow across the device from anode toward cathode. This forward current is called anode current. So this is the simple working of thyristor, how thyristor get turned on with the help of gate current. There are number of method to turn off the SCR. This is most reliable method of turning on of SCR is gate triggering. Okay, but here in this video, we discuss about how thyristor get turned off. So to turn off a conducting SCR properly, the following condition must be satisfied. The first condition is the anode current or the forward current flow across the SCR must be reduced to zero or below the level of holding current. What do you mean by holding current here? Holding current is basically the minimum value of anode current below which device get turned off. So if the anode current or forward current reduced to zero or below the holding current, SCR or thyristor will turn off. And the second condition is to turn off SCR, a sufficient reverse bias voltage apply across the SCR to regain its forward blocking state. So when the SCR is turned off by reducing forward current to zero, large number of excess charge carrier exist in the different layer to regain the forward blocking stage of an SCR. These excess charge carrier must be recombined and get neutralized 
therefore in order to accelerate this recombination process a reverse voltage is applied across the scr so if we want to properly turn off scr these two condition must be satisfied now classification of commutation uh, there are basically two type of scr commutation first is natural commutation and second is force commutation natural commutation is also called class f commutation and force commutation is further divided into five classes class a class b class c class d or class e so in this video i will explain you what is natural commutation what is force commutation and what is the condition for proper reliable operation of any device now first is natural commutation natural commutation is also known as line commutation as the name suggested the thyristor or scr turn off naturally or self commuted okay in natural commutation we give ac supply at the input side so here ac supply is responsible for natural commutation so uh, for natural commutation i will explain you with the help of this diagram this is the simple half wave rectifier circuit here we use ac input supply at the source side a diode and this is the load resistance rn during the positive half cycle of the input supply the anode of the diode is positive with respect to cathode and when anode is positive with respect to cathode diode start conducting and it, it is behave like a closed switch so this time output current across the load is equals to supply current and output voltage across the load is equals to supply voltage so here we see in the waveform this is the input supply voltage vm sin omega t from 0 to pi this is the positive half cycle at this positive half cycle diode start conducting and behave like a closed switch this time output current is equals to the supply current and output voltage is also equals to the supply voltage now what happened during the negative half cycle when negative half cycle will appear at the input side the anode of the diode is negative with respect to cathode this time diode is turned off this turn off is called natural commutation because this turn off is happened due to the negative half supply appear across the input side so this is called natural commutation this time the output current is equals to zero and the output voltage is also equals to zero because this time diode is turned off and behave like a open switch so there is no close path for current to follow across the load so here we see in the waveform during the negative half cycle of the supply voltage pi to 2 pi output current is also zero and output voltage is also zero because diode is not conducting this turn off process of diode is called natural commutation now if we want to calculate the turn off time of diode how much time a diode is turned off so here we see in the waveform this is the one complete cycle 0 to 2 pi so 0 to pi diode is turned on output voltage and output current will appear across the load and pi to 2 pi in this duration diode is turned off so there is no output current and output voltage across the load so how to calculate the turn off time of diode we know that this is the time period omega t okay here omega t is equals to 2 pi minus pi that is equals to pi now tc is equals to tc is equals to pi by omega second so in this way we calculate the turn off time of the device now for reliable operation of any device this condition must be satisfied tc is always greater than or equals to tq where tc is the circuit turn off time and tq is the device turn off time for reliable operation of any device this condition must be satisfied or we can say that for avoiding the commutation failure this condition must be satisfied okay in idle case tc is always equals to tq but in idle case when there is no losses tc is circuit turn off time is always equal to device turn off time but practically it is not possible practically tc circuit turn off time is greater than or equals to device turn off time so how to calculate tc 
I have already discussed how to calculate TC. So turn circuit turn off time is given by the time duration for which the device will turn off due to reverse bias condition is called circuit turn off time. That means the current through the device is zero. So this is the definition of circuit turn off time. Uh, now what is the difference between circuit turn off time and device turn off time? So first we consider the normal PN junction diode. In case of normal PN junction diode, we take a P type semiconductor, a N type semiconductor when we join P or N type semiconductor material, a junction is formed that is called PN junction and a narrow depletion region is grow across the junction. We know that P type semiconductor contain majority carrier holes and minority carrier electron. N type also contain majority carrier electron and minority carrier holes. Uh, when we apply forward bias to the normal PN junction diode, what will happen? We connect P type from the positive terminal of battery, N side from the negative terminal of battery. When we apply this type of polarity, the P side hole move toward the junction in this direction and N type electron move toward the junction in this direction. After some time, the depletion region is collapsed and current flow across the junction from anode toward cathode in this direction. So here we see in the waveform, this, this is the applied input voltage. When we give forward bias to the normal PN junction diode, what will happen? A large current flow across the device and device is in conducting state. Okay, current flow in forward direction. Now, when we apply reverse bias across the device, it means P is connected from negative terminal of battery, N is connected from positive terminal of battery. What will happen? P side holes move away from the junction in this direction. N side electron move in this direction away from the junction. And the depletion region is increasing. But in this time, a small leakage current flow across the device. This is called reverse leakage current. And this will flow due to the minority carrier present in P type or N type semiconductor material. So here we see when we apply reverse bias across the device a small leakage current flow across the device this leakage current is flow due to the movement of minority carrier present in p or n type semiconductor material so this time here device is not tur completely turned off devices turn on because current flow across the device in reverse direction now after some time when this minority carrier recombine with opposite charge and to be neutralized a small current flow due to the trap charge carrier these trap charge carrier also present in the depletion region so here we see from t1 to this time a large reverse current flow due to minority carrier present in p or n type semiconductor material this charge carrier is called storage charge carrier and this time is called storage time. After this time, what will happen? A small reverse leakage current slowly, slowly flow and decay. And this current flow due to the trap charge carrier present in the depletion region. So this time also devices turn on because a small reverse leakage current flow across the device due to trap charge carrier. This time is called transient time. Okay, at this time, here we see the device is completely turned off. Here we see in the graph, to turn off any device or to turn off normal PN junction diode, it will take some time. That time is called reverse recovery time of diode TRR. So TRR is the combination of TS plus TT. And what is TRR? Here I define the minority carrier required a certain amount of time to recombine with opposite charge carrier and to neutralize. This time is called reverse recovery time of diode. This time is the combination of storage time and transient time. Now what about SCR? In case of SCR, we know that SCR having large number of layer, diode having two layer P N and two terminal it having four layer p n p n and four three terminal anode cathode and gate so it having large number of storage charge carrier 
and it having large number of trap charge carriers so here we see in the reverse bias characteristic this is the forward bias characteristic here thyristor is turned on after t1 time when we apply reverse bias across the scr anode is negative with respect to cathode scr is in reverse bias condition in this time duration a reverse current flow across the device due to storage charge or minority charge carrier present in the different layer of scr what happened after t2 after t2 this storage charge is recombined and neutralized but there are large number of trap charge carrier present in the depletion region so after that also a reverse current flow across the device but this current will decay slowly slowly okay so this time is called transient time and transient time is the time duration where current flow due to the trap charge carry now what will happen after t3 time period t3 time period device is not completely turn off because here we see in scr a third terminal that is called gate terminal is present this gate terminal here we use to turn on the device gate terminal also having a small number of trap charge carrier so due to this small trap charge carrier present in the gate side a small leakage current flow across the device or at time instant t4 the device is completely turned off so here we see in case of scr scr will take more time to turn off as compared to diode so scr turn off time is slightly higher 30 microseconds so the total time required to turn off the scr is tq is equals to trr plus tgr where trr is the reverse recovery time and tgr is the gate trap charge carrier time so due to this gate or due to large number of pn pn layer it will take more time to turn off as compared to normal pn junction diode now force commutation in case of force commutation as the name suggested we apply external force to turn off any device uh, this external force is applied with some external circuitry force commutation we use when we give dc power supply at the input side this dc power supply will not turn off any device because we know that dc power supply is constant this is dc power supply dc power supply cannot change with respect to time so it is constant so it not turn off any device naturally that is why when we use dc power supply at the input side we use external force commutation circuit to turn off the device now in case of scr the scr is turned off by external circuitry in case of force commutation this external circuitry is called commutation circuit there are five type of force commutation first is class a commutation class b class c class d or class e commutation all commutation circuit i will discuss in my coming videos one by one so stay continue keep watching keep sharing my videos with your friends and juniors if you want notes please visit my website the link of the website i will give in my description box and display here also www.quick-learn.in please refer my website 